we live in a twilight world. Hang on, let me turn the car off. Yeah, we'll do another quick recording, man. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll get to this picture here in a sec. Um, this is not me, by the way. This is just a screenshot I took. But, um, listen, I, I, I can, you know, the energy is still very, very heavy at the moment, yeah? Uh, it, it, I, it kind of always is in December. I mean, if you're in this part of the world, you know... It's very cold, it's very grey, it's, um, you know, let's be honest, man, the weather does affect us. The weather has a big impact on our mood, right? And maybe our mood affects the weather, who knows? Uh, you know, Christmas in general, right? Very kind of a, a strange time because, you know, in general... People are probably at their most depressed, right? Because it's cold, it's the end of the year, blah, blah, blah. Yet, I mean, maybe this doesn't apply to you, but just like, you know, you know the average normie, right? Underneath the surface, they're very depressed. Maybe feeling a bit low. It might be the weather, it might be other things. And then Christmas is here where they have to put on this kind of fake, jovial kind of spirit and they have to, you know, get into Christmas and all this kind of shit. Um... You know, I I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna start ragging on Christmas right now because ah, fuck it, you know. I think we can all see the problems with Christmas. How it's become a very materialistic thing. It programs children into thinking that. Well, it, it programs kids into yeah materialism very early on. You know, play by the system and you'll get presents. Blah blah blah. Um, yeah, but that's it, you know, it's people have to put on this fake, you know, especially if you've got family and kids and stuff, you've got to put on this kind of like fake happiness, you know, Christmas Day, most people tend to go and, you know, all meet up at one house and it just, it's just, it just drags, doesn't it? People just get pissed. They're generally seeing people they don't want to see and all this kind of stuff. So yeah, man, that's all on people's minds. I just, I remember growing up, yeah. You know, you grow up poor, right? With no mum and dad. Christmas, to me, was just fucking a killer because the TV and all the posters and everything showed nothing but happy families. And if you ever watch a Christmas film, always a happy family, happy ending. And they're always so rich as well. So, you know, things like uh, Home Alone was always a bit of a fucking killer, innit? Like, you see how big that Home Alone's house is? Fucking hell, and you're you're stuck in a shitty council estate house, poor, no Christmas presents, no Christmas tree, you know. It really does, if you're not in that middle class world, it kind of has the opposite effect Christmas. It highlights, it makes you just feel a bit, I don't know. It highlights how poor you are, and it highlights you haven't got a family. Anyway, so yeah, I can understand... And you should also be able to understand why other people around you and you yourself might be feeling a bit low. You might be feeling a bit down. You know, we just got to get through it, man. You know, time is flying at the moment. You want to talk about time travel? Shit, man, it's flying at the moment. I woke up this morning, had some breakfast, made a 20-minute YouTube video, uh, had a coffee, and here we are. It's nearly 7 o'clock at night now. Time is flying. We are still traveling through time. Well, I am. Um, I'm assuming a lot of you are as well, right? It, it, you know, time is all about how you process it, yeah? I often say reality is subjective. Time is subjective, subjective as, as well. Uh, I really must start talking about time, actually, a lot more. Because, that's you know, that, that it's all about time, space, and reality, yeah? These are the things. That kind of, the construct of our existence, right? They're kind of like held together by time, space, and perception of reality. I mean, there's other factors, obviously, you know, the illusion of money, uh, the illusion of dates and stuff. But when I'm talking about time, I know a lot of people will come in the comments and say, well, time is an illusion as well. It, it is, but I'm talking more about, you know, our bodies traveling through space, you know, there is a morning, there is a night, and there is us going through that period. You can call it entropy. Time is just a nice little four-letter word that covers that, right? So, yeah, man, time is flying right now. So, anyway, back to this picture right here. And um, this is a screenshot of 
a YouTube channel I watch, you know, kind of like a guilty pleasure, yeah? So this guy, right, he's a, he's a tall, slim guy with long hair, and he basically reviews electric bikes, right? Now, how do most people feel about electric bikes? We obviously associate anything like electric bikes with electric cars, and we think, oh, you know, 15-minute 15 15 minute cities and... Um, you know, Klaus Schwab and all this kind of stuff and Greta Thunberg, all these things come in your mind, right? And of course, I'm I'm on I you know, the obviously the electric car is a bad idea. It's obviously a scam. They're obviously in bringing in a mode of transport that is obviously going to be very inefficient and is going to fail, but that's what governments do. Yeah. Their greatest ally is being inefficient. Therefore, they always have a job fixing the inefficiency this is basic stuff you should know this by now right the government's goal is to be as inefficient as possible so they always can make their existence relevant you know they will always have a shitty train service so they can get, so the plutocrats can give themselves jobs fixing the shitty train service but like a leaky tap if you fix that leaky tap you're not gonna have no business right it's better if you just keep putting the bucket underneath the fucking leaky tap and getting paid to you know, empty that bucket. Over here, we got the NHS. They, they deliberately keep the NHS, you know, moments away from breaking point. So every time there's an election, they can just bring up, you know, we're going to save the NHS and all this kind of shit. So, um, yeah, electric cars, bad idea, obviously. Now, electric bikes, on the other hand, electric scooters are quite fun. Um, yeah, like I said, this guy here, he... I'm, I'm going to make an assumption here that during the lockdowns, he bought an electric bike, he made a YouTube video reviewing the electric bike, and lo and behold, a career kind of folded in front of him. And what happens now is every electric bike company in the fucking world sends this guy their bike and wants him to do a review. They even send cash. I, he done a video once where... He opened up the box, he unboxed the new bike, and there was a block of cash in there. And I don't know whether he was taking a piss or not, whether that was a gimmick, or whether they are genuinely thrown in bucks to review these um, electric bikes. You know, he's in California somewhere. I think he's somewhere near Hollywood. I don't really know. But, you know, look at the location, man. He's in a nice sunny place by the beach, palm trees, and he's just reviewing electric bikes for a living. I'm fucking jealous. Um, and if he's getting paid to do it, that's fucking amazing, man. This is this is a kind of like thing where I, I look at the internet and I think, well, actually, maybe there's some people that are having a good time and you, maybe you can have fun with it, yeah? I mean, that's not a bad thing, is it? To be, imagine that, a YouTuber who's getting paid to review electric bikes and just rag electric bikes up and down Hollywood Boulevard or wherever the fuck this is. I don't know where this is promenade somewhere in california in the sunshine ah, come on come on you've got to admit yeah that's pretty wow so yeah man this is one of my guilty pleasures man i just it's one of these things i mean he's, he's pretty much just doing the same thing in every video just a different bike but i like it and i will i will confess yeah i kind of do a similar thing in summertime i don't review electric bikes but i just love being around the beach in the summertime, I drop to practically work in two days a week. I work Saturday, Sunday, and then I spend the rest of my time either sunbathing or riding my bike up and down the beach, drinking coffee. I just love being out in the sunshine. That's what I do. The fact this guy's monetized that, I'm that's amazing, man. I feel that that's good, right? You know, the channel, his channel, yeah, it's nothing to do with like bitching. It's nothing to do with any fear-based truth or conspiracy nonsense. Reviews his bike, nice sunny location, over and done with. And I'm, I'm going to assume as well he gets to keep the bike, which obviously means he probably sells the bike on. And that straightaway there is probably another, you know, these bikes are brand new, like £2,000. So even if he sells it at half price, that's an extra £1,000 he probably gets um, a month or a week or whatever, man. So, uh, yeah, again, that's an assumption. I don't know. You'd have to ask him. Uh... You know, there's loads of these about. There's, there's one. In, there's a UK one, right, where the guy's like driving around in Birmingham, but it's obviously not quite as fun, yeah, because fucking you know, shitty, drizzly, rainy, shitty Birmingham's not quite as 
uh, wow as, um, you know, wherever this is, Hollywood Promenade or I don't know. My geography on LA is not that great, but, you know, it, whenever I see it, it's great. It, it just does look like a, it, you know, great weather, right? And, um, so yeah, man, that, that's kind of cool. I'm, I'm just... I mean, what the bad side of electric bikes is, you know, it's not even a bad side. What people will say is the bad side is they, they'll say, yeah, they just want you on an electric bike so you can't leave your 15-minute city and all that kind of shit. And I always kind of like, I flip that around and go, well, what's the alternative? You have a petrol car where you sit in traffic for an hour turning up to your fake job? I mean, I'm one of these people, I think this current system we have where you know, 70% of the Western world has a fake job. I think it's ridiculous and it's got to go. So I'm kind of happy for a new change. Regarding humanity, it always has to keep moving forward, yeah? There's no point just staying where we are. It can't be done. Infrastructure fails all the time. These buildings and stuff around you, at some point they're going to fail. So before we kind of like you know, automatically if assume it's pure, e everything is pure evil and it's pure 1984. If they build, you know, if they're building kind of like, um, you know, bike pathways everywhere, that creates jobs. That's real jobs. And riding bikes around in sunny locations, that's fun. That's good. And getting out on your bike is healthy. Yeah, again, I'm pro people being out in sunshine. I'm pro people riding bikes. I don't mind having an economy where we build actual stuff that's being used. What I can't get on board with is this current fake jobs economy that people are fighting for. See, another thing about that scamdemic, one of these reverse psychology things they did, which I think is very clever, um, is they made, through the scamdemic, they reversed psychology, double-crossed the masses, right, to the point where they took to the, a lot of the masses took to the street demanding to have their jobs back, begging their slaves for their fake jobs. Now, think about that. What people should have done, really, in my opinion, has been like, well, hang on. No one's going to work, yet the economy's still going. Fuck it, let's try UBI. We're, we're practically here. We're at UBI. Let's do it. No. You bring up UBI with anyone. They will automatically, you bring up UBI in their head, a picture of Klaus Schwab comes up and they automatically think UBI is some sort of um, control mechanism thing. And that's not really the case. Yeah. Always with UBI, the main point was to get rid of the government. Yeah. You meant to reduce the government to its lowest, lowest form, you know, tarmac in the roads and changing the light bulbs in the street lamps and you just give everyone a livable wage and you open up the free market so they can go and do whatever they want yeah you work on top of it yeah the point is you treat everyone like adults you get rid of this fucking big mother big brother government that we're paying to enslave us you get rid of them treat everyone like adults you've got ubi now you can work on top, you can grow your own food, you can get fit, it doesn't matter. You're adults now. Maybe you want to put your money together in a community and build something. Whatever, you're adults now. You have to start taking responsibility. So yeah. But you, like I said, you bring up UBI, I've, and I've done this as well. I like to, um, you know, poke the bear a bit in it with the truth of community. I bring up UBI and they all say the same thing. Like, Where's the money going to come from? That's the most stupid thing they say. It's obviously going to come out of thin air, like all money does. Money is just a loan from a bank based on promises. It's not real. It's not based on anything. And then people say, well, yeah, you know, it's just going to be a control mechanism. Well, that's not UBI. If the government are still around, it's not UBI, is it? Yeah, the whole point is to get rid of the government. Yeah, I'm pro getting rid of the government. I'm pro getting rid of these fucking fake jobs. Because ultimately, UBI is not the final solution. It's a stepping stone to a world with no money. We want to get to a world with no money. And ultimately, it's about getting people to have time on their hands again. So many people right now are so caught up and having their time stolen from them, working a fake job. 
that they can't fucking tell their ass from their elbow. They can't see past their nose. They're so bogged down with a fake job. And a lot of people are going down with stress and um, all kinds of nonsense working a fake job. It doesn't mean anything. It's purely been created to keep them off the street. Um, it's also very soul-destroying, all these fake jobs. <clears throat> a guy to check out is a guy called um, David Graeber. And he had a good book called Bullshit Jobs. And for me, that was one of them holy shit moments when I listened to the audio book of Bullshit Jobs. And he's the one that sold me on UBI. You know, once you listen to this, you know, how absurd and out of control the meaningless and pointless employment is. And his kind of, his, his solution is, you know, let's just give UBI a try. And I'm kind of on board with him. He sold it to me very well. Because the only real difference is, right, is because we're, we're on UBI already. You, you can't really understand that, but we are on UBI already. The difference is most people have to pretend to go to work to get it. All that will really change is you don't pretend to go to work. You're not going to go to the office and sit there. You know, all these office workers sit in an hour's traffic every morning, turn up to work, pretend to work when really they're just sitting on Facebook. And... um when a boss comes in, they quickly fucking, you know, put their emails back up and pretend they're working. Instead, you just don't bother with that. And you still get kind of the same money. But now you've got time on your hands. And I would love to I love to be in a world where people are just out on the beach all day, ragging around fucking electric bikes. You know, chatting to each other, exploring each other's, like, ideas and philosophies, man. Imagine we got rid of money and then imagine we got rid of clocks. You know, got rid of all these weights and measures that are holding us down. Um, so yeah, man, that's it. That's what I wanted to say. I, I just enjoy binge watching um, <laughs> this guy reviewing electric bikes. I mean, I don't think I could ever get an electric bike. I mean, they are fucking expensive, man. An electric bike, brand new, is more than a fucking petrol car. Crazy. Besides, I like I like actually riding a bike with my legs because you know it's exercise. It keeps you fit. Um, yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong. I don't, I don't ever travel far enough to justify an electric bike. Regular bikes are fine. But I'm definitely pro people getting out on the beach. I mean, I used to do them videos, didn't I, called Cycling Through the Apocalypse. I think I've removed them all now, but I basically strapped an action camera to my bike, my little folding bike, and I would just do all these um, trails, you know, bike paths in the UK, like traffic-free ones and that. Because I think that's a, a good step forward, man. Getting out on your bike is a very good thing to do. I'm not really into giving people advice, but definitely buy yourself, go online, buy yourself a decent second-hand folding bike and get out there and start doing some more cycling when the summer comes around, man. <laughs>